Much of what we know about the culture of ancient civilizations is through depictions that survive in their bronze sculpture. These sculptures were created with the lost wax process thousands of years ago. The lost wax process is more sophisticated today, but it essentially remains the same as it was in 2000 BC. Most modern sculptors work with a fine arts foundry and its staff of experts to have their pieces cast in bronze. Once the artist completes the original sculpture, which is usually modeled in clay, plaster, or wax, the original piece must be molded. The mold consists of two basic parts, an inner layer usually of a flexible silicone rubber supported by a rigid protective mother mold of plaster or fiberglass. The mold is engineered to separate in two or more parts, thus releasing the original artwork. When the mold is rejoined after the original artwork has been removed, an exact negative image of the original exists. The next step is to pour wax into this mold to create the positive wax replica of the original artwork. This petroleum-based wax is melted at about 210 degrees. It is poured into the mold, rotated so all surfaces are covered, and the excess is poured out. Pours are repeated to achieve a thickness of about 3 16th inch in wax. When cooled, the mold is opened and a wax replica is removed. Wax chasing is the next stage of the process. This delicate process consists of removing seam lines created where the mold separates, repairing imperfections such as air bubbles, and reattaching any parts that had to be cut off during the molding process. This is done with heated soldering irons and special tools. The completed wax must look exactly like the artist's original sculpture. At this point, the wax is ready to be sprued. Wax bars or channels are attached to the piece to create pathways through which the molten bronze will travel to the artwork. Wax vents and gates are also attached to the wax sculpture to aid metal flow and allow gas to escape. All the wax will eventually become negative space later in the process, which will ultimately be replaced by bronze. The ceramic shell process begins by dipping the sprued wax into vats of liquid slurry, followed immediately by a bath of sand. This process builds a thin wall of silica around the wax. This is repeated until a shell approximately one half inch in thickness forms around the wax. When dry, the shells are now inverted and placed into an autoclave to be de-waxed, eliminating the positive space taken up by the wax and thus creating a cavity or negative space for the bronze to occupy. A large crucible fired by a furnace is filled with bronze ingots and melted. The metal begins to melt at approximately 1700 degrees. The ceramic shells at this time are also heated in a kiln to approximately 1100 degrees to aid the flow of the bronze. When all temperatures are reached, the shells are removed from the kiln and the molten bronze is poured into the shells. When cool enough to handle, hammers and chisels are used to knock the shell off of the solidified metal. Gates and sprues are also cut off. Lastly, the piece is sandblasted to remove the fine remaining shell from the bronze. The bronze must now have all imperfections repaired and any parts welded back on that were cut off during the sprueing process, once again making an exact reproduction of the artist's original sculpture. Pneumatic tools are used to recreate these subtle surfaces. If internal support is needed, it is added now. The final step in this process is applying the patina to the bronze. This process enhances the surface by creating color through the application of various chemicals, which are applied at a high heat with the use of a torch gun. When the desired effect is achieved, a thin coat of clear wax is applied to the surface to enhance and preserve the patina. As you can see, the lost wax casting process is lengthy and labor intensive, requiring the collaboration and expertise of many. 
Knowledge of this process gives us a deeper respect for bronze sculpture.